Welcome to Small Talk Daily for Friday, May 8th, 2009. I thought it'd be nice to go through some of the improvements I've been making to the Facebook connection that I've been building. First, let's get started with how you connect. You have to have a secret holder, which you supply with an API key, an application ID, and your secret key, which you have gotten from going to Facebook and registering. You have to do that in order to use this stuff. You have to have all that information or else well, it's just not going to work. You have to have some application against which this is hitting. And I've got a desktop application, which of course is not defined. I'm just in the process of building something. So first thing you do is get that information in the application and then log in. Now logging in means going to a browser. That login method brought this up. So it spawned a browser, sent the appropriate information, and here I went. Now, to see what it is that I got doing that, let me open a browser, and I'll show you what that did. So let's bring a browser into view, and we'll go down to the Facebook API, Facebook Connect, we'll go to Connection. So let's take a look at the login information, which is under Sessions. So login goes here, and what you do is you create your token, and that's just a matter of making an API call to the back end. It's a post. You get the token, and then you get the URL for the login, which sends this token in as an URL argument, and that's when you spawn the browser and get told by the back end whether you are logged in or not. If you weren't logged in, it'll offer a chance to log you in. If you're not a member of Facebook, that's where you go ahead and create an account. In any case, you need to go through that step first. Once you've gone through that step, then you can go ahead and get a session. So let's do that. And now having gotten a session, let me inspect this and show you what I've got. What I've got is a connection object that's holding on to my API, the Facebook API object the authorization token, and then this other stuff down here like the session information. So that gives me all of that stuff. Once I've got access to that, I can now do some more interesting things. So if you take a look in the browser again, you see that I've built up a number of things. You go in here into API events, for instance. I've started building up against the events API. So what I can do is I can add a filter here, saying I want to filter by the user ID and by the RSVP status and get the events. And what that'll tell me is for this particular user, which is me, and this particular status, which is attending, let me go and get all the events that I'm interested in for which people are attending. So let's filter it that way. So I'll go ahead and create a filter, which is just a dictionary, and then I'll do this and inspect the results. And that gives me back some events. So I have a Facebook event, ESUG09, this thing I did in Cincinnati a while ago, and then ESUG08. So there was an event for that. So this one's in the future. These two are in the past. And you can double click into these and get things like the description. So here's the description for ESUG 08. Here is the end time, which is August 30th of 2008. The event type, education. So you've got all this information that pulls straight out of this. And you've got the ability to look things up. For instance, the start time and all of this information. So you go ahead and close that off. Now let's get one other thing here. Let's go ahead and get the event members for this particular information here. So for this event, which was one of these events, I'll go ahead and get the members. So I'll go ahead and inspect the results on that. And you see this gets me the event details. I'll bring that into view. And that tells me who's attending by ID, decline by ID, and dictionary. Now these things are not terribly interesting. These are just ID numbers. But what you can do is you can go and get full details. So get full friend details for and I tell it I want all the details that are possible for all the people that said they were attending this. So let's go ahead and inspect that. And that'll go up to that, get these people who said they were attending the event. So I can look at this, like there's Andreas Hiltner, one of our engineers. And this gives his affiliations, which is just his location, Cincinnati, his first name. And most of these are private information, so you're not going to get anything for them unless you've been given specific authorization. So a lot of this stuff will not be filled in, where some of it, like the profile URL, will be. So there's public information here, and some information which is hidden from you unless the user in question has specifically authorized you to get it. So you're taking advantage of some of the stuff that Facebook has on the back end. And again, the implementation for this is very, very simple. You go into connection and look at any one of these methods like this. All you do is you add the parameters that the back end calls for, and then you go ahead and execute this. Let's go ahead to the API object. So I go to Facebook API down here. And I go to my API here. This is the actual execution. So I stuff some basic stuff in here, tell it I want JSON because I'd rather parse JSON than XML. I give it all this signature information that it's supposed to have. And then I do this, the simulate calls business. Facebook has an API that allows you to batch calls. So I'm just caching parameters if the batching goes on. But in general, this is all there is to it. Do a post, and if I go into private, you'll see that. The do post is just a matter of whether I should use HTTPS, grab a client, and then do a post 
with the form data. And that's all there is to it. You get back the results, you parse them using the JSON reader, and away you go. So that's about it for today. Until next time, have fun with Smalltalk.